Hey everybody, and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack. And today we're gonna to be looking at some more Photoshop Elements 15. So this is the Photoshop Element 15 video tutorial. And today I'm gonna to be walking you a little bit through the organizers. I'm sure the title always gives it away. So, you know, not a lot of videos out there are looking at the uh, organizer as much as the editor. I kind of like to go into both of those. And folks, if you get a chance, stop by my uh, training site at jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com, where you can learn everything you need to know about Photoshop Elements. Right now, there's uh, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, we are preparing the 15 course, but right now, if you take the 14 course, you're going to pretty much get everything you're going to get in the 15 course. So don't hesitate to sign up. You're like, oh, I got it. Photoshop Elements 15. I shouldn't really do that, but go ahead and sign up for the 14 course and you'll be ready to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started talking about the organizer. So let me just minimize myself here. Okay. Now, so the first thing we're going to do with the organizer is you're going to uh, gather your photographs or uh, your pictures from whatever media they may be on. Mine happens to be on a, a media card, an SD card. So I'm going to file get photos or videos or photos and videos click on get files or not get files i'm sorry <laughs> let's back up a minute here we're going to go into get from a camera card or a card reader let's go back for a minute if we said we're going to get them from files and folders this would be something like if you already copied your photographs to the computer and you have them maybe under the pictures folder and you're going to click on uh, uh, one of the the folders itself and you can say, uh, get photos from subfolders. So any subfolders in there, you can actually pull those files from and import those into your organizer. So if you're new to Photoshop Elements and you just got the uh, Photoshop Elements installed, that may be something you wanna look at is maybe you want to look at using the organizer to pull all of your photographs in uh, and start getting those organized, which isn't a bad idea. But for this demonstration, we're going to say we're going to get them from my card reader. So here's my camera or card reader. We're going to select a device and we're going to select the untitled one here. There's 21 files in there and we can see it's 1.30 gigabytes. We are going to choose where we want these to be imported to. This is very important. And the way I like to do this is to choose a folder not one subfolder under pictures create a subfolder name by the date you can obviously do that but what tends to happen is you start to lose track of your photographs and you get to that point where your photographs are kind of out of whack uh, because you don't know what's in each folder so what i'd rather do is do a custom name and the custom name here so custom name we're going to enter a custom name here and we're going to enter Oops. Uh, this is from Christmas 2016. So the custom name now you can see where it's users, Jack, pictures, and now there's going to be a folder called Christmas 2016. It makes it a lot easier to import your photos and again, be able to find those later on. Now, do we want to rename the files or do we just simply want to leave the files, the example here, dsc01193.arw, which is a raw file. Um, I think we'll just leave them as the default. Now, by all means, you can rename those. You can rename them by the date you're importing them. Uh, you can rename them by a custom name. So say if you wanted to do a custom name and maybe you wanted to do that. So we'll say Christmas 2016. And what's gonna happen is it's going to plus one every time it imports a new photo. So in other words, we know there's 21 pictures. So this would give us a total of 21 pictures in that actual folder named Christmas 2016 underscore 0001, 002, and so forth. So by all means, you can do that if you wish to. Matter of fact, for this demonstration, since I put that in there, we're going to leave that there. Now, delete options. Now the delete options is after copying, verify and delete originals. This is off your memory card disk. I can tell you uh, from past experiences, it's very good idea not to delete your originals. 
especially if you're doing an event photography business, if you're uh, photographing seniors, I like to keep those on the card until I'm sure I have everything. If you're doing a wedding, uh, we've done tons of weddings. And when you do a wedding, you also want to make sure that that is saved on that disc for later. So a lot of times we'll put these in the organizer at the wedding. Uh, my wife may be working in the back of the corner of the reception hall. And uh, we have usually have a computer set up, a laptop, and she's usually transferring pictures onto the hard disk. But we also leave them on the memory card. So let's change this to after copying, do not delete originals. Once you have everything there done, you can hit get media. But for this demonstration, and I want to show you a little bit about the advanced dialog. The advanced dialog box allows us to do things like uncheck all the photos. And maybe you only want to check certain ones that we're importing. Maybe you have the other ones already imported. Maybe you know they were bad shots, whatever have you. But I like to check all. So I'm going to click on check all. The other things with our custom that we don't have before, the top part here, the save options we had, right? We have the folder name. We have the renaming the files. So we have those in the original um, import dialog box, the standard dialog box, such as this one but we are looking at optionals. This is something that I do not like. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past uh, with any of the other Photoshop elements uh, versions, I like to uncheck this, automatically fix red eyes. And the reason I say that is even if a photograph does not have any people in it, it will scan that photograph when it's importing to see if there's any possibility of having red eyes. So we wanna uncheck that. Automatically suggest photo stacks, we can leave that on. We'll talk about photo stacks uh, in another video, and I also talk about that a lot in my course uh, at jtclearning.com. Automatically stack RAW and JPEG. That's if we're taking two photographs. Uh, my Nikon cameras would do that. I'd have two different cards in there, as well as my new Sony a6000 will do that. It will shoot a RAW and a JPEG photo. Well, it can stack those individually, so that, that's a nice feature. We'll leave that turned on. This is a big one. Import into album. This way, once you get your photographs imported into the organizer, you don't have to go through, you know, figure out what you want to keep in there. And if they're all based on one subject, such as this one, Christmas 2016, we want to build an album. So I'm going to click on import into album. And we'll give it a new name here. And that name will be uh, Christmas. 2016. Click on OK. So now we know that the photographs coming in will already be put into an album. Very, very nice. This down here, a lot of people uh, email me and talk to me uh, of different ways, and we talk on Facebook about, uh, Jack, what about copywriting your photos? And you can do that, and I think, if I remember right, nope, that's not right. Nope. You can copyright your photos. The creator is, and this will put it into your metadata. So your metadata is in that file itself, right? If we click on it, we look at properties, there's metadata in there. It's, it's kind of, it takes your information and bakes it or almost uh, inserts it into that file itself. So we can create, put on here, creator is Jack. You can put a copyright on here if you wish to do so. Uh, maybe your copyright is something like, um, I don't want that on there. <laughs> Maybe your copyright is something like, uh, we'll do a C for copyrighted, and we'll say um, Jack's Tech Corner. And now that'll be written into your metadata. Again, it's a very good idea to do this if you, in fact, are shooting uh, professionally or even if you're a, uh, a semi-professional. In other words, you're making money with your camera. Uh, but you haven't really labeled yourself professional and you don't do it full time. Once we have everything set up in here, all we have to do is simply click on get media. It's going to start pulling that media in pretty rapidly onto our hard drive on our computer. Again, uh, it looks like there's a couple video clips on there I might have. But what's going to happen is it's going to leave the original photographs on that memory card so we still have that if we uh, have any problems later on down the road. And there you see it's analyzing the media. It's pulling the media in. 
And it looks like we have uh, some uh, created some stacks of some s similar photos instantly. These are our stack pictures here. Okay. So you can come over here and click on stack or unstack. Such as that. So that will stack those up. If you don't want to go through this, all you have to do is simply click on cancel or done. And now if we go back under albums, we'll see now that, in fact, we do have a Christmas album of 2016. As I said, there's a couple video clips in here. I am going to just simply, re well, maybe I'll leave those and see what those are. But now you can actually uh, bring these photos up. We can double click on it. And you can see now what's happened here is the photos are giving us a question mark. So why would that be? Usually what that's telling me is I know I shot these photographs in RAW. And it's not allowing me to go back and see the RAW pictures yet because they're probably still organizing themselves and analyzing themselves in the organizer. So anyway, if you click on one picture, we can always zoom it up. And zoom all your pictures up here. And now you can see that these pictures are sure enough in the organizer and ready to go under an album called 2016. So again, there's just a really nice way to start using the organizer, just a way to get your feet wet a little bit so you can start uh, playing around a little bit and getting your photographs imported and start organizing those by albums. It's a really good way. Now, folks, once again, if you want to really dig into uh, Photoshop Elements and you really want to learn everything you can about it for the money you spent, check out jtclearning.com. Uh, the classes are very inexpensive. There is, I believe, 50 videos per course. So you get a ton of uh, lessons and you get a lot of learning. Uh, the feedback has been very positive, so check those out. Folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Jack's Tech Corner and the Photoshop Elements 15 Organizer. I will see you back here next time for another photography video. So long for now.